You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! You may not be able to handle the truth, but these guys can. Welcome to the Long for Truth Show. Heretic hunters. Hey, what do you think of these guys? I think they're damned and on their way to hell, and I don't think there's any redemption for them. You stink, frankly. That's the way I think about it. Hello and welcome to the Long for Truth Show. My name is Dan Long. I'm Stephen Long. And on today's episode of Long for Truth, we're going to be talking about um, Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling, among... uh, some other things, so stick around. All right, Steve, you and I are back together for the first time, I think, since we did the interview with Kofi. Yeah, yeah, that was back in October. Uh, Well, the end of October, yes, was the uh, end of the Strange Fire Conference, so it's been a it's actually been a long couple of months, believe it or not. I know, and I saw your post on Facebook. Um, you posted in the Long for Truth uh, on the Long for Truth page, and uh, you explained uh, to our, all seven of our listeners. Um, oh, wait a minute, I thought it was three. Oh uh, no, we gained a couple. We gained a couple. <laughs> so you, so you, you explained to uh, those who actually uh, do listen to us. I don't know if they like us or not, but they listen to us. Um, you actually explained to those who listen to us uh, the the reasons why we haven't posted, and I, I uh, I've done um, two since I think I think two since um, misunderstandings about the Trinity Part One, how to hear from God Part One, which by the way, is what we're going to be kind of talking on, uh, or that's going to be the topic that we're going to be uh, looking at tonight. Um, but anyway, I've done two. Uh, and it's just been it's just been a rough couple of months, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. My work my work uh, schedule has drastically changed. Uh, on average, I'm working anywhere from twelve to fourteen hours a day now, and on top uh, couple of that on top of a, a, a newborn baby and regular preparation of sermons, it uh, keeps me quite busy. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing on my end too. And we also. Uh, you know, we also got snowed in today, Steve. We, uh, I'm sitting here staring out the window here in upstate New York. By the way, for those who may just be uh, first-time listeners, we, uh, Steve and I do this podcast together uh, when we can. Steve lives in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. I live in uh, upstate New York. Uh, not Buffalo, but in the Albany area. And I'm sitting looking out my window at about a foot of snow. Uh, my wife, Robin, and I were out in the driveway at 5.30 this morning, shoveling. And, uh, <laughs> and hey, at least we're going to have a white Christmas. Well, I am not jealous. I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> I like one good snow or maybe two a year, but... Well, you're good... S- south, it stays pretty mild. Uh, gets pretty cold down here sometimes, but other, you know, as far as weather-wise, it stays pretty mild. Well, your big snow uh, is, what, four inches? Uh, yeah, that's like a blizzard for us. <laughs> it, uh, it, everything shuts down in about a half an hour. I'm not kidding. Like a half inch of snow will shut down the entire you know, city, the entire area. We're well, just not equipped to handle that kind of a, that kind of snow. The, I guess the uh, city f- thinks it would be too much of a waste of time to buy plows to use them maybe once a year. Yeah, that's true. Well, we, uh, like I said, we got about a foot and we uh, got, I guess I saw a Facebook post um, actually last night, uh, that, uh, the, the first service of our church was canceled. Usually when they have six inches or more coming in, they'll cancel the first service, but usually they keep Sunday school and the second service going on. Now I teach the foundations class at, um, at my church. So, um, got a call from the pastor this morning that, uh, they, they actually, sh- uh, canceled Sunday school. So we were snow, we actually were snowed in today. So, um, and we had a, uh, pretty cozy day. Good, good. I had a 
cozy day too. Not snowed in. So. <laughs> All right, Steve. Um, you and I have been um, often in discussion about uh, hearing from God, um, talking about whether the Bible itself is sufficient or whether God speaks to us through inner promptings or through inner voices or whatever. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about a, uh, a little book, well, and, and, and probably even more, but we're going to be talking, a, a, at least for a little bit anyway, about a little book that was written by a lady named Sarah Young. And it is a little book called Jesus Calling. Have you, uh, have you looked at anything? Have you ever have you looked at um, any of the passages or any of the devotions from that book? Actually, oddly enough, I did, Danny. We were in Virginia yesterday. We were taking the family. I was taking the family to go see The Hobbit. And we happened to wander into a Lifeway Christian store. And uh, they had that book on display. And I read a couple of the... Uh, couple of the devotionals in there yesterday. I've also read some of the excerpts. Uh, you know, they, they usually have limited previews on Amazon and Google Books, and so I've, I've, I've thumbed through it. I haven't read the whole thing, but yeah. I've, I've thumbed through it some. Well, I've got the little uh, book. I've got the light version, anyway, on my uh, on my iPad. Um, and um, let me just read to you uh, just a little bit of it. Well, before I even do that... Um, one of the reasons why I came across the idea of doing this, because we've already done an, an episode on Jesus Calling, uh, right, right. I think in 2012, but it just seems to be gaining more and more ground. And now I find out that there's even a Jesus Calling for kids. And um, that really disturbs me. Yeah, be- it's, it's basically just monopolizing on something that's popular. And you notice, I notice these fads throughout the evangelical, and especially throughout the evangelical church, and, and that's one of the things that disturbed me, because several years ago, it was guardian angels. Everything was guardian angels. Every, oh, well, we gotta, we got to tap in and be able to uh, uh, converse with our guardian angels. And Yeah, I remember that. They actually had comic books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they I, did. Right. They actually came out with a comic book series. Yep. Uh, Angel Wars or something like that. I used to see it in the bookstores all the time, and there were. Uh, I guess it was mainly aimed at, at teenagers and kids, but I mean, just just ridiculous things like that. And and it's scary because it seems like evangelical Christians are falling for every new fad that comes along, rather than being discerning and looking at the Word of God, then they're just taking what's coming along and saying, ooh, this person heard from God, or ooh, this person talked to their guardian angel. And they're running with it. And people are just so lacking in biblical discernment. I mean, it's really, really scary. And I I don't say that about everybody and every denomination, but it seems like a large part of people are either just not using good discernment, or they're doing it just to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, um... I think one of the things that bothers me most um, about uh, books like Jesus Calling is it, it it bothers me because the Bible is right there. And it, it seems to me to be laziness on the part of so many Christians because, you know, the Bible is just so such a big book. I mean, there's 66 books and... You know, I, I I don't know exactly where to start, and you know, and there's all kinds of excuses. So a book like Jesus Calling is really accessible. Jesus, you know, I open it up, and there there's a devotional for today, and that's Jesus it's speaking short. right to me. Sure. That's that's what people want. It's short. It fits their lifestyle. They want a thirty second fix with God to go on for the rest of their day. Yeah, and that's that's sad in and of itself. Because I'm sorry, it doesn't matter who you are. A 30-second fix with God is not going to keep you spiritually full. Like okay. drive-by devotions. You remember the, the, the drive the, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The drive-by yeah. devotion about, book. Yes, yes. Um, uh, but, but, you know, I'll be honest with you, Danny. When I was reading it uh, in Lifeway yesterday, I, didn't, I did not find it offensive in the sense that it was uh, heretical or in any way. Now, on a, on a, on a topic of God speaking extra-biblically, yes. But the actual 
way it was written, I didn't find it offensive, but I still find it disturbing. So let me let me balance that statement out by saying that it was somewhat disturbing. I find Jesus in Jesus Calling, the Jesus in Jesus Calling to be a very um, kind of romantic, rem- romantic Jesus. Let me just read... Uh, let me tell you what I'm gonna, what we'll do first. I'm going to read a section from Jesus Calling, um, and then I want to look at an article that Sarah Young wrote because, and you have that article in front of you, right? It, it was a it was a uh, interview um, yeah, that was CBN done by yes. yeah by CBN, and there are some things that I want to point out in that interview that really really bothered me. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, now, now, uh, let me reiterate though, when I say uh, I didn't find it offensive, I mean the words in and of themselves right. weren't offensive, but it was it was rather disturbing the way that she presented what God was saying to her and how Jesus was this oh, I'm just so tender and loving and and and, yeah, and he is tender, and he is loving, and yes, he is full he of is, grace. Is. But the but, but way it, it's written from a feminist point exactly. Of view. I mean, you got to accept that fact. The woman wrote it. So yeah, you exactly. Get more of a woman's point of view on it. Well, let me let me just read a little bit of it. Um, this is from uh, March fifteenth. Listen to the love song. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> the the Nasal X. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the love song. That I am continually singing to you. I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. And that, by the way, is um, Zechariah. Zephaniah 317. I rejoice over you with singing. Like that. See that and that's the thing too. If you want to hear, if you want to if you want to to look at God's tenderness and his mercy, why don't you just open up the Bible? You can go to Zephaniah and read it right there. Anyway. I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. The voices of the world are a cacophony of chaos, pulling you this way and that. Don't listen to those voices. Challenge them with my word. Learn to take many breaks. Now that sounds like Beth Moore's... uh, (laughs) Do you remember... Have you you heard the the Beth Moore mini break story? Uh, No, actually I'm not. I'll have to tell you about that in a minute. Anyway, learn to take many breaks from the world. Finding a place to be still in my presence and listen to my voice. There is immense hidden treasure to be found through listening to me. Though I pour out blessings upon you always, some of my richest blessings have to be actively sought. I love to reveal myself to you, and your seeking heart opens you up to receive more of my disclosure. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So that's the March 15th devotional. But here uh, Jesus tells, uh, seems to be telling Sarah Young the same thing that he told Beth Moore. Take many breaks. I guess uh, Beth Moore had, um, the story goes, Beth Moore was, uh, had a hectic schedule and she heard God tell her to take many breaks. And so she went to a zoo and uh, bought a Starbucks cup of coffee and enjoyed the uh, day with God and uh so uh, th- th- those kind of things. And people would say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, the thing is, is that um, <laughs> there's all of this stuff, all of the stuff that we're reading here, or, or all of this stuff in Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling, um, you know, it, it's just, it, Jesus just isn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not the Jesus I read in the Bible. It, 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 the Jesus what? I read when that, that speaks... Um, Yes, he's gracious towards sinners, but nowhere do you find Jesus ever, even speaking to the apostles this way or the disciples this way. You, you don't find this kind of stuff going on. So, you know, I'm I, I just now now some of the things she said are not untrue. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 I I see that. However, if they're already found in the Bible, why do we need so that's young that's the to point. Tell us? That's the yeah, point. What, what God's, yeah, yeah, the world is full of chaotic voices. Okay, the Bible tells us that. The Bible says, love not the world or anything in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, God rejoices over his people, his people, and that needs to be made clear. God mm-hmm. doesn't rejoice over the lost with singing. God rejoices over his people. Uh, what were some of the other things she said in, in, in the devotional? Well, she quoted, um, or Jesus is supposedly uh, quoting himself, asking it will be given to you, seeking you will find, knocking the door will be open to you. But um, you, you have that. Um, 
listen to the love song. Where does Jesus ever tell any of his disciples, e- listen to the love song that I'm singing you, Paul? You know, it, it's where do you get that? You don't get that stuff in Scripture. Um, and so it's all a well, nice, on, we'll nice little feel the, good. Uh, what? I was going to say later on when we get into see the interview, but we're really going to find out uh, where this whole listening and dialoguing with God came from. And I think folks out there that are going to listen to this podcast will actually be surprised that it actually comes from something heretical. And we'll get into that a bit later. I don't want to give it away now, but if you keep listening to this podcast, you're going to find out exactly where Sarah Young gets this practice of dialoguing with God from. So I just wanted to comment on that. And Stephen, let me just say this too, that it is a dangerous practice. It It really is. And and you know that I know this from personal experience. You know that me trying to listen, you and I know about all, know all about this. Me listening to God, I've made some horrific decisions listening to what I thought was God out, apart from Scripture. Yes. So this is one of the reasons why this kind of stuff really bothers me. Um, it's dangerous. It is just dangerous. Well, um, and, and it is, because how do you know what you're hearing? And you said this before, how do you know the voice that you're hearing is from God? Exactly. I don't even mean an audible voice. Right. How do you know the inklings that you're getting are not your own flesh and your own desires and are from God? And you know what? George Mueller said it the best. George Mueller, uh, the 19th century German uh, uh, preacher, he was, I remember reading something about his, his prayer practice. And when he went to pray, he said he would stay on his knees until he knew for a fact that it was no longer his own will desiring what he wanted to do, but they, until God broke through and formed his own will to God's own will. And that's, you know, that takes discipline. It's mm-hmm. not something you're going to do in 30 seconds. Right. Exactly. Well, let's, um, let's look at some of the Amazon reviews from the book, Jesus Calling. Um, oh, this, this was fun. <laughs> I, it just, it, it blows my mind. It, it just, it's almost as if the scriptures you know, the Bible is just kind of tossed to the side. And books like Jesus Calling, and uh, there's another book that you were going to be talking about too, uh, Steve. Um, what was the name of that book? That, uh, Conversations with God. It's Conversations a series with God. of books. Okay. Well, let's look at some of the Amazon uh, reviews here. Uh, this, is a, um, this is a reviewer here that says, this book has, uh, has an excerpt to read for every day of the year. And by the way, that's what Jesus Calling is. Jesus Calling, if you don't know what that is, Jesus Calling is a devotional book. It's a small devotional book. There is a a, a, a one, a two, maybe a two, maybe three paragraph um, devotional to read every day. There's a couple of scriptures, uh, scripture references at the bottom of each uh, little devotional. And uh, these are conversations that Sarah Young supposedly had with Jesus um, and, and she'll tell you, I don't think, you know, she makes any bones about this. She'll tell you that they were not audible voices, but they were what she believed Jesus was saying to her inwardly. Um, but this is what she said. This is what this reviewer says. This book has an excerpt to read uh, for every day of the year. So far, I've read January 1st through January 28th. In addition to those 28 days, I've jumped around reading random pages, and I've been so encouraged by what I've read. Each reading is a half a page to one page long. The book is small, so the reading time is very short. See, very convenient, Steve, like you were saying before. A little short, little, you know, don't don't, don't infringe on my day kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, the book is, uh, is small, so the reading is very short. Each page is written as if Jesus is talking directly to you. There are scripture references listed at the bottom of each page as well. So if you're looking for a great devotional book that will help you get closer to the Lord, you won't take and, and won't take up a large amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Book for you. This is the book for you. Jesus has also spoken to me. I that, hear that's, that's the scary one there. Yeah. Well, that's this is the same this is the same person. No, no, I'm sorry. No, no, it's not. This is this is the next uh, I'm sorry, this is the next uh, the next uh, review. It says, Jesus has also spoken to and through me. I hear in these writings what I believe to be his authentic voice. What I believe to be 
his right. authentic right. voice, which so helps what, me to so reconnect. What you believe is what you believe, the truth. That's that's where you have to get. That's what you. That's what you have to determine. Yeah. Hey, God spoke to me too, and He's telling me that what you believe is false. That's so exactly how right. How do we determine which voice is God's voice? That's exactly right. Somebody speaks to you. And tells you, hey, God spoke to me and told me to give you a message. You just say back to them, well, really? Well, I was in my devotions this morning praying, and God specifically spoke to me and said that you would be coming to me and not to listen to you because you were speaking through a different spirit. So, <laughs> so I mean, how, do, how can you, how can you deter? Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, now let, me, let me pause and say this. We obviously don't have the these uh, these people that are reviewing actually what their motive I mean the motivation is the book but what they're actually trying to say because sometimes uh, you know meaning can get lost in what yeah. you write however however that one was kind of plain that one was kind of clear Jesus has also spoken to and through me mm-hmm. some of these are vague but some of these are actually very clear in what they're trying to say that that one that you just read I think is pretty uh pretty frightening yeah here, here's another one. Every page seems to be written just for me. For me. Everybody says the same. It keeps me truly enjoying his presence. A great book to help us live in the time frame of today. Like the Bible is not designed to look for us to live in the time frame of today. The Bible's not relevant, you see. It's an old book and, um, you know, it's just not relevant. Now, that may not be what that person is saying, but that's how that comes across to me as I'm reading it, you know. Um, but it says, um, a great book to help us live in the time frame of today. Bring such peace to your heart. Yeah. You know, there is no book like the Bible. If you're looking for peace, open up the scriptures and read them, you know. All I can say is, wow, this is the next one. All I can say is, wow, it's like every day the devotion is written just for me. The scriptures that are attached with the daily reading usually seem to be just for me. I highly recommend this book for everyone. It's uplifting and a great way to start the day. So there's just a couple. I've got more on here. We're not going to go through them. They all pretty much say, you know, the let, let, let me pause just to say a couple things. Number one, for those listening, we are not saying that you should never use devotional books. Devotional books are great. However, most devotional books are not written in a dialogue type with God conversation. I mean, you read a devotional book like Streams in the Desert. Or Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. Or Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. That's usually taking a, a scripture verse and expounding upon it mm-hmm. rather than saying, Jesus is speaking to me to tell you this. Right. And I think that's the real difference between most other devotional books I've read and the Jesus and the Jesus Calling book. And then, too, another thing is we're not trying to be, I guess, uh, bashing everything, but folks, uh, discernment is really lacking in our day and culture, and people really need to stop and focus on what the Bible says, what the Word of God says, rather than going to a devotional book and taking a scripture that may or may not be out of context and running with it. It just doesn't work. If you apply scripture wrong, if you take scripture out of context, you're going to apply it wrong. And if you start applying scripture wrong in your daily walk, a lot of bad things are going to happen. Ex- I mean, period. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. And we're not. We're not bashing the book. And, but, you know, people will still say, after listening to this podcast, that we're mean-spirited. Yeah. I mean, that's what's going to happen. And we are not trying to be mean-spirited. I have personally, again, I'll say this again, I have personally made horrific, horrific decisions got my family into some serious financial difficulty and everything through what I perceived to be God speaking to me outside of the scriptures. And this is why this is one of my pet peeves, um, because I can tell you right now that um, if I would have just went through the Bible and looked at the scriptures themselves in order to help me make the decisions that I uh, was going to uh, make, that would have saved me a lot of heartache and saved my family a lot of heartache. So 
Uh, this is not a bashing on Sarah Young. I, I've never, I don't know who Sarah, I've, I don't know Sarah Young personally, neither do you. And we're not bashing Sarah Young, but we are definitely um, warning people about um, clinging to books like Jesus Calling. It, to, okay. to me, it is anti-biblical. I, I hate to say that. I hate to say, it sounds mean-spirited. But when you listen to this interview that we're getting ready to look at from CBN that Sarah Young did with CBN, you're going to see, I think, the same exact thing that I see, and that is that it's almost not – Sarah Young would never say she is anti-biblical. I can tell you that right now. But the way that things are being said in this interview really makes it sound it. And I'll point that out when we get there. Well, Dave, I want to know, let me pause and, and talk about this Conversations with God book. Because yeah. it's written, this book, Conversations with God, is written by uh, Neil, Neil Donald Walsh, I believe is his name. And it's written in almost the same type of format. Now, let me, let me explain a little bit of the background. The first time I ever heard of Conversations with God was when I was actually working at uh, the Western Tidewater Regional Jail in Suffolk. And one of the inmates had gone to court that day and I guess had left the book on the desk and never came back and got it. It was a library book. Uh, And I saw the title. It it, it intrigued me, so I picked it up and I started reading it. Now, that was the first book. And that's been several years ago. You're talking about back in 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. And since then, I understand there have been several books. But the same type of format that he's using is almost the same type of format that Sarah Young is using. And I'm going to read an excerpt here from you, for you from Conversations with Book Number 3. This is called Embracing the Love of the Universe. And listen, he's going over this first uh, part here. He's, uh, this is page 275. He's going over on in Book 3 and recapping a lot of the things that he's written in the first two books. And this is what he says. And this is supposed to be God talking here. Okay, so listen to how he phrases he says the holy work in which you are engaged has really just begun for now at last you understand what you are doing it is you who have caused yourself to know this you who have caused yourself to care and you do care now more than ever before about who you really are for now at last you see the whole picture and then he goes on to say this book three places all places us all in this extraordinary position this is not just a statement made to me this is God talking to everyone. So yeah, you can that's, see. Wow. Yeah. You wow. You can see. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's almost the same type of format. And this type of stuff is dangerous. This guy is supposedly having dialogues with God about political, economical, religious uh, topics, just all kinds of things. And all of his books are supposedly supposed to be, quote-unquote, spiritual helps Hmm. to help people get in connection with God. Almost like the same thing as the Jesus Calling. Now, this is obviously a lot more blatant than a Jesus Calling book, but it's still along the same lines. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let, let's go ahead and look at that interview now. All right. Uh, this is an interview that Sarah Young did with uh, CBN, um, and... Uh, this is what it. This is how it starts out, and CBN gives a brief bio of uh, Sarah Young. It says Sarah was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and grew up in the South. Uh, after graduating from college, she made four trips to Europe in less than five years. During her fourth trip, she became a Christian. At uh, I, I can't pronounce that. Can you pronounce it? Uh, I guess it's uh, Ella Bree. Ella That's what I would. That's what I. How, what I was going to say, but I wasn't sure. Ella Bree Fellowship in a tiny Alphine village in France with a degree in philosophy from Wesley uh, Wesley College. I guess it's Wesley. uh, Wellesley. Wellesley? Wellesley, I guess, yeah, college. Sarah also holds graduate degrees in psychology, counseling from Tufts University, University, Covenant Theological Seminary, and Georgia State University. She met her husband, Steve, at Covenant Seminary, they are employed by Mission to the World and have worked in various sites in Japan and Australia, planting Japanese churches and counseling. Steve and Sarah currently minister to Japanese people living in Perth, Western Australia. And then the interview begins. 
And this is CBN asking, Sarah, how did you learn to dialogue with God? What a question. How did you learn to dialogue with God? Um, Let's see. I opened my Bible at Genesis 1. Yeah, and I, and I, and I read. And I read it. <laughs> page 22. That's how I learned to dialogue with God. I mean... Well, the thing the is... Question, the question in and of itself is loaded. I'm exactly what I was getting ready to say. You know? It is. So, How did you anyway, learn to dialogue with God? Okay. My journey began with a devotional book called God Calling, written in the 1930s by two women who practiced waiting in God's presence, writing the messages they received as they listened. About a year after I started reading this book, and this is what this is what I've got underlined here, Steve, in this interview, I began to wonder if I too could receive messages during my times of communing with God. Um, now, let me, let me pause. I w- this yeah. this quote-unquote dialoguing, practicing the presence of God, probably many evangelicals have heard that book. Mm-hmm. It's a book by Brother, Brother Lawrence. Lawrence. Now, let me give you a little bit of background information on that. The presence of God. What is it called? Lecto Divino, Danny? Is that Lex- the, Lexio, Lexio Divina. Lexio Divina. Lexio Divina. Now, folks, that is a Catholic mystic practice. Yes. What Sarah Young is imitating and what Sarah Young is practicing comes from a Catholic mystic practices of hearing, quote unquote, hearing God speaking and writing down yeah. what he's hearing. However, you never find anywhere in Scripture that commands us to do this. Meditating on the Word of God is not waiting to hear God's voice and writing it down. Not at all. Not at all. But I also, too, I also, too, want to make a distinction between what Sarah Young is practicing and what's called journaling, okay? Now, there are a lot of people who journal. They read the Bible, and then they write down thoughts on the passages. That's a little bit different. What Sarah Young is doing and what she is uh, picking up here from these other two women is the Lexio Divino, or whatever it's called, which is a uh, basically a satanic practice it's all mysticism that's that what it that's is. that's all that's what it is it's mysticism um it, catholic monks do this and started this and i have watched and listened to actual catholic monks on youtube yes. talk about lexio divina um and and, 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 and see it see it for yourself yeah, uh, Google it up. Yep, exactly. It is, you know, you do take scripture and you, you know, you read the scripture over and over and over again. And then, you know, you kind of try to place yourself there in the scripture. And then you just kind of, uh, you, you can pick a phrase from the scripture. You can pick a phrase like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you begin to sit there and listen to, just wait and listen to see if you can hear his voice, see if you can hear him speak to you. And and it's just it's 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 all it's nothing more than mysticism. It's con, uh, contemplative. It's this whole contemplative spirituality thing uh, that uh, that you got going on uh, in 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 Rick, you know in pastors like Rick Warren and and yeah. uh, Bill Hybels and and those guys. I mean it's 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 dangerous stuff. But she said I began to wonder if I too could receive messages. During my times of communion with God. Um, see that again. Receive messages. And, and look, i got to be gracious because I've been where she's at. You know, I, I not maybe that intense, but, you know, I, I do kind of understand. But it's still that it's it's just such a weird kind of way of phrasing it. Receive messages. It almost sounds like um, some kind of... Um, what do you call it? A seance can <laughs> kind of receive yeah. messages. Well, Danny, uh, what she says next really is kind of kind of defeats the purpose of reading the Bible anyway. Because she says, "I've been writing in prayer journals for years, but this was one way. This was a one way communication monologue. I knew that God communicates through the Bible, and I treasure His Word. But yeah. I wondered what He might say to me personally." On a given day, but what he says to you personally is what he says in the Bible. Exactly, and that is where that is the first thing that I wanted to point out. Where remember where I said that 
you know, Sarah Young would never, ever, ever say that she um, she's anti-biblical or she's anti-Bible. She would never say that. As a matter of fact, she says here in, in parentheses, and I treasure his word. But when you say something like that, um, where, where you put that little but in there, but I yeah. wonder what he might be saying personally to me on a given day. He, she knows that God communicates through the Bible, but I want something more. What yeah. more can I get well, from see, God? That's the thing. It seems like the view of the Bible that people are taking is a view that's kind of general. And when they don't see the Bible as applicable for their everyday lives, they begin to seek other quote-unquote personal messages from Mm -hmm. God. And if you are reading the Bible systematically, and you are going through a particular thing, God is going to speak to you through His Word. He's going to give you an application that you can take away from reading his word on a daily basis. And Stephen, that's really important to what you just said, and I want to emphasize that. You, 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 you read the Bible systematically. Well, you know, it's not about taking your Bible and popping it open and saying, okay, let me put my finger on this, and this is what I'm going to read today. That's not going to help you, and you're not going to get the context of the passage. If you're, well, if you're well, not... If you're not um, uh, reading the Bible every day, but you but you, you you really want to start, you do want to start in a book. And I would suggest that you start in the New Testament at Matthew chapter 1, and you read all the way through the New Testament, and then go and uh, read portions of the Psalms and Proverbs um, uh, in, in, the, in the Old Testament, if you're just, you know, beginning. But, you know, when I first, Stephen, when I first got saved and I read the Bible, I'll tell you how I did it. I started in Genesis I read all of Genesis, and then I went to the New Testament, and I read Matthew, and I read all of Matthew. And then when I was done with Matthew, I went to Exodus and read that. And then when I was done with Exodus, I went to Mark. And so I went from one Old Testament book to the one New Testament book just like that. And, of course, you'll finish the New Testament first when you do it that way. But um, that's how I read the Bible through the very first time. I did, uh, I did a little bit different. I, I read all the Gospels, then I went and read the entire Pentateuch. Then I went back, and I think I read... Uh, Acts, and then I went back and read uh, Leviticus, Numbers, I mean, uh, not uh, the Historic Joshua Judges, Ruth, and I went back and read some of the general epistles. I think that's how I did it the yeah. first time. And that's a good way, too, because you're, you're staying in the, you're, you're, you're in the old and in the new text. Like the Pentateuch. Yeah. You know, yeah. how are you going to interpret Leviticus without Exodus? Right. Vice versa. Exactly. You know I mean? Because so much of, of the law that's in Leviticus is in Exodus as well. And not only that, when you read Hebrews, if you've not read Leviticus or Exodus, or right, yeah, Hebrews is going to be kind, point. you're going to be like, huh? Because you have to really, uh, you, you have to at least have gone through uh, the, the Pentateuch in order to really get Hebrews. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, she says, um, but I wonder what he might say to me personally on a given day. So I decided to, quote, listen to God with pen in hand, writing down whatever I sensed, I sensed. So, he was saying. So now God's word is not objective, it's subjective Yeah. to whatever you feel like it is. Of course, I wasn't listening for an audible voice. I was seeking the, and here it is, still small voice of God in my mind slash heart. Um, then the uh, CBN interviewer asks, how awkward was it initial, initially to begin a dialogue with God? Stephen, I thought a dialogue with God was God speaks to you through his word. You speak to God through prayer. That's yeah. a dialogue with God. Dialoguing with God because, is prayer. Because God's word drives us to prayer. When yeah. we read God's word and we see where we fall short, or we see something we need to do, we we go to God in prayer. And I'll tell you what, that you it, when you see how just incredibly majestic and glorious and, and awesome God is. Uh, I was as a matter of fact, we're uh we're we're going to be starting um on the uh uh in our foundation Sunday school class, we're going to be looking at the uh, uh the incommunicable attributes of God and I was just looking we're going to base uh omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence on Psalm 139. And I was just reading that this morning, and it just it, it brings you to praise, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so God's Word has an effect. Now, Stephen, one of the things I want to also make clear is you and I are not, you know, we're not 
as you said, trying to slam Sarah Young or trying to slam people who who have that book. And we also ourselves know that uh, God still works today. He he works uh, through uh, you know other people in our lives. You know he 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 his providence is um, you know guides his children's lives. Um, he. He still does miracles today. I think at least miracles in the sense that when he raises a spiritually dead person to life by by creating faith in their heart so that they believe the gospel, that is an amazing, that's the best miracle of all. You know yeah, what I mean? Raising the dead. What's a better miracle than raising the dead? Exactly. And, and that's, you know, we, we believe that God, uh, you know, we're not saying that the, you know, the, 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 there's, God doesn't work apart from us reading the Bible. I mean, he he works in our lives all day long. He, he you know, he's he's in control. He's sovereign. The events that take place in our lives, we can point to God. Uh in him we live and move and have our existence. But what we're talking about here is this mystic uh mystical communion uh so to speak with God. That that's where we're that's what. That's the danger that we are pointing out here. Right, right. Um, she says, I felt a little awkward the first time I tried. All right, this is after the question, how awkward was it uh, initially to begin a dialogue with God? I felt a little awkward the first time I tried. And, li- and, and then I've got this uh, little phrase uh, marked. But I did receive a short message. Uh, the content was biblical. And it addressed themes that were current in my life, trust, fear, and closeness with God. Uh, see, to me, that's kind of general. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't have trust issues or fear issues yeah. or closeness with God issues? Exactly. I mean, that's, you know, if you're really going to bring a message from God, let's get specific. Let's let's start pointing out some real specific things. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, hey, if this is God speaking, God's good. God doesn't beat around the bush with us when he convicts us of sin. He convicts us of this. He doesn't just say, well, you've got a, you've got a problem in the trust area, but I'm going to let you guess what part of trust that is. Right. You know, he says, no, this is where you need to trust me with your finances, you know, you know, with your work situation, you know, with whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Or, 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 or he tells us to sow a seed, you know, uh, make a thousand dollar vow. You know that that kind of thing, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's um, it, it's it is it's general. Um, let me move on a little bit. We're never going to finish this. We're already past thirty. What are we at? We're like at forty five minutes right now. And um, you warned me. We're not going to do a three hour podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, here we go. Day by day, messages began to flow more freely. The, this, this new, new way, way of communicating with God became the high point of my day. Now listen, this is another thing. This is why I say that Jesus Calling really at the core is anti-biblical. Because listen to this phrase again. I'm going to read it again. This new way of communicating with God beca- became the high point of my day. First of all, she says it's a new way. So there's another way now apart from scripture. And then she says that that new way trumps the scripture because that rather than the scripture becomes the high point of her day. That- yeah, and then she goes right on to contradict herself and says, I knew that my writings were not inspired. As only scripture is. H- how can her writings not be inspired? How? Yeah, if, they, if they're truly messages from God, then they have to be inspired because they're from God's mouth. Exactly. I, it, it, there, it's, it's impossible for those quote-unquote messages from Jesus not to be inspired. Yeah. If they're from God, they have to be inspired because God, and they have to be divine because God is divine. Exactly. She says, I knew that my writings were not inspired, as only Scripture is, but they were helping me grow closer to our living Lord. That's just, again, that that's just, it's just anti, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but it really at the core is anti-biblical. It really is. 
Um, the uh, interviewer asked the next question. What would you tell someone... Oh, I hate this. What would you tell someone who wants to begin listening to God? So I've been reading the Bible for 30 years, but I've never listened to God. Well, to me, that means that... Uh, or when it was... He'd been a Christian for 20 years. Well, if a person could be a Christian for 20 years and read the Bible for 20 years and still not hear God speak, something's wrong. Well, they do hear God speak. Every time you listen, every t- look, you open up the Bible and you begin to read in Genesis chapter 1, that is God. It is, it is, it is the what whole... I mean, what I mean, Danny, is I know what you mean. if you claim you're not hearing God speak and you've been reading the Bible 20 years, then that's an indication of an unregenerate heart. Yeah. So what would you tell Stephen? Stephen, well, let me ask you the question. What would you tell someone who wants to begin listening to God? I would say what exactly what I said at the very beginning. Open your Bible. Exactly. Start Genesis 1. And end the <laughs> That's, That's exactly it. right. I mean, God, somewhere in those pages, if you're seeking God, God is going to address whatever situation is in your life that needs to be addressed. No, there's no fear. I mean, there's no question about it. There's no doubt about it. God is going to address something somewhere in all those 66 books, an issue that you're dealing with in your life. Even and the Song of Songs? Again, it's going to happen again. Even if you're reading the Song of Solomon? Yeah, exactly. All right. And she says... Um, now, she's going to answer the question. This is This is how she answers it. She says, let me begin... Now, this is... This is okay. I kind of well. Let me just read it, and you'll see what I'm what I'm what I'm talking about. Let me begin with some cautions. That's an understatement. <laughs> That's an understatement. Let me begin with some cautions. It is essential to remember that the Bible is the only infallible record of God speaking. How is that? How is that so? How is the Bible? Not or how is Jesus calling not on the same level as the scriptures? If it really is Jesus well, I, speaking, I think I know how you can get around that, Danny, because it's a personal message to you, not the whole world. Well, and now it is a personal message to the whole world. I mean, the book is out; it's a it's in book form. Uh, people are reading it. The Amazon reviews say Jesus is speaking to me directly. Yeah, that's you know, well, there you go. So, it's essential to remember that the Bible is the only infallible record of God speaking. Always subordinate, or or, or this is what you always subordinate your personal listening to absolute biblical truth. Well, a person, most people that would read, well, I better, let me retract that statement. There are many people that I have found that I, that, that, you know, I've run across that would not have, wouldn't spend enough time in the Bible to know if what they're hearing is biblical or not biblical. Right, right. You know, I, I want to be very careful in saying, I'm not trying to slam anyone, but that's just, that's just my experience. That's what I've, you know, what I've experienced talking to other Christians and, you know, she says, um, new Christians. Well, you're really saved, you don't, you're a, babe, you're a babe in Christ anyway. Yeah. You're not going to know a whole lot. She says, new Christians especially need to be cautious about listening to God in this way. I had been a Christian for 20 years before I began this practice. On the other hand, believers are instructed to, and here's where, I tell you, Stephen, they take this, people who claim that God still speaks today, they use this scripture right here, especially those who are into that whole, the whole contemplative spirituality. Yeah. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm forty six ten. Uh, and if you if you listen to uh, the last podcast, How to Hear from God, I read that entire psalm, and that entire yeah. psalm has nothing to do with prayer or nothing to do with listening to God. No, it doesn't. She says, uh, I believe there is an immense value in learning to wait quietly in God's presence. For me, the main benefit has been coming to know God intimately rather... Now, this is this is a Bible slam, Stephen. This is a slam on the Bible. Listen, I'm going to read this quote uh, in context again. 
She says, I believe there is an immense value in learning to wait quietly in God's presence. For me, the main benefit has been coming to know God intimately rather than knowing about him. So to me, that's a slam on the Bible. Because what is the knowing about referring to? Is it not referring to the Bible? Yeah. So, so it wasn't enough for her to just read the scripture and let God speak to her. She had to get a personal message and write it down to become intimate with God. So these these uh, personal quiet times, these personal speakings with Jesus trump the scriptures. And it, it, it that's that's what it sounds like. She says this has this these messages this this communicating with God in the way that she's communicating has increased my love for him my trust in him and his unfailing love and ironically she quotes or she she puts Psalm 13:5 she says and my awareness of his presence with me always Matthew 28:20 20. so instead of the bible doing that for her these little short messages and these little uh love talks that she has with Jesus, these are the things that she is um, getting her encouragement and, tr- you know, and um, growth, Here's Christian the growth. Question in. for me. I'm wondering what all the Christians in the first 2,000 years of the church did before practicing the presence of God came along. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I wonder if they felt intimate to God, intimate and close to God. I wonder if Polycarp was feeling intimate with God when they burned him alive. Right. Yet, he was still singing hymns. The witnesses say he was singing hymns like the flames didn't even bother him. Now that is intimacy with God. And Polycarp didn't have to practice uh, dialoguing, quote-unquote dialoguing with God to feel intimate with him. Right. Right. I I don't know. It just, it boggles me how somebody feels like writing down what God says to me just makes me feel so much closer, makes me love him even more. Yeah. And, and again, to me, it it is a, it is an offense or a slam, uh, uh, on the Bible itself. I mean, you just, there's no way, excuse me, there's no way around that. Now the next question says, can you describe how you actually go about listening to God? Now I underline this entire response because it, it, well, you'll hear. She says, whenever I move to a new home, I look for a place where I can meet God in quiet communion. That becomes my sanctuary for listening to him. Before I begin, I pray for protection of my mind from distractions, distortions, and deception. The Bible makes it very clear, Steve, that the heart is deceitful. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can understand it? And you know what people will say when you say, well, you know, how can you trust your heart when the Bible says your heart's deceitful? They'll say, oh, but wait, the Bible says that God has given us a new heart and a new mind. And they'll be referring to Ezekiel. But that passage in Ezekiel is really speaking of a heart that now desires to obey the scriptures. It is because it, that new heart God gives to a a believer is a heart that now is pliable to obey his word. It has nothing to do with the fact that it doesn't mean that our heart isn't still sinful and our heart isn't still deceitful, you know. Um, but she says um, that she prays for distractions, for, to, for protection of her mind uh, from distractions, dis- distortions, and deception. And then she says... I ask that I will hear only the voice of Jesus, yet every single word he wants me to hear. Then I simply pray, help me, Holy Spirit, and I listen. Eventually, I, quote, hear a phrase or a sentence, and I write it down. As I listen and write, I continue asking for the Holy Spirit's help. I also thank Jesus for the message as I receive it from him. I may take short breaks from listening to read what I've already written. I tried to relax and enjoy Jesus' presence. Not becoming overly focused on writing scripture often comes to mind. Uh, uh, scripture often comes to mind and I write 
that in whatever version I remember it. You know, a question that I just thought of, if these are messages, personal messages of God to her, why was she publishing in a book? What are the personal messages for her going to accomplish for somebody else? How are they personal messages to everybody? Well, you see... Because it goes back to, to me, it kind of goes back to the putting her writings on part of the scripture. She's saying my writings aren't inspired, but yet I'm putting it out yeah. there for everybody to hear and to see what God has said to me because it's relevant to you. Right. That's exactly right. That's exactly I, right. And Steve, one of the things I... I, know, I don't get it. It's, to me, it's contradictory. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to, to, to say, too, is nowhere in the Bible, and I probably already said this, I can't remember if I did or not, but nowhere in the Scripture do you hear, do, do you see this kind, and, and not even in church history, do you see this kind of dialogue between God and his children? As a matter of fact, when God spoke to people personally in the Scriptures, he didn't, he didn't speak to every single Jew. He spoke to the prophets. And he didn't speak to every single Christian in the New Testament. He spoke to the apostles and to some of those uh, associates uh, that were close to the apostles, like Philip, um, the evangelist. But th- it wasn't that every single Christian could hear Jesus or saw Jesus the way Peter saw Jesus in a vision or, you know, on the roof when he was praying and when he saw the sheep come down from heaven in Acts chapter, what was it, 11? Yeah. And, and yeah, chapter 10. And not, no, not every Christian gets to see Jesus in a vision like John did in the book of Revelation. The very, very, very few people, even in scripture, has actually even heard God's audible voice. And yeah. even... You know, so so why this? Why you know this is because it's this is a a mystic practice. It is mystical, and it is um, something that um, you can be tricked by your you know by your own emotions, um, by your own sinful heart, and even by something demonic. Unfortunately, for well, sure. I mean, you go to any church service where they emotionally. Uh, charge people up to have everybody come to the altar or have everybody come. You know, you know I mean, it's just, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. I remember being in one revival service where this guy was, was, I mean, he was preaching, man, he was waxing elegant and he's telling people, you know, if you want the fire of God, come on down. Come, and he's getting people emotionally charged up and everybody's come down. I, I guess I look like the idiot because I was the only one that didn't go. Oh, Steve, but you, but you know, you ran into a, a really solid uh, couple that actually um, got messages through their dog, right? <laughs> Oh, yes. Why don't you tell tell us that tell us that story just just for humor purposes before we before we move on. With Kofi, yeah, well, I talked about this in an interview with Kofi, but Faith and I were actually going to a you know, we were preparing to go to the mission field, so we were in uh, Western Carolina for a school, and the church that we were going to, there was this couple that uh, wanted. We were getting ready to leave for a month to go to an evan- uh, Muslim evangelism class. And we were going to be back after a month. Well, this couple wanted us to take us out to dinner. And so, you know, that's Sunday night. So we went with them. And uh, while we were at dinner, they began to tell us about this little dog that they got. They got from the SPCA or found running on the street, something. I don't, I don't remember where they got them. But they said the dog was very smart, very intelligent. You know, you gave him a number, he could tap it out with a paw and just do all these kind of neat little tricks. And me and Faith were, you know, just kind of giggling about it. Oh, that's so cute. And, then they began to tell us that this dog was sent to them from God because the dog prophesied. Hmm. And they would read these events in the paper, and then they would consult the dog if that meant that Jesus was getting closer, you know, his return. And the dog would bark yes for once, or, or once for yet, no, and twice for yes, or something, something ridiculous like that. And they wanted me and Faith to come over that night and meet the dog. <laughs> And we were like, uh, well, you know, it's going to be a really long day for us. we got a lot of traveling because we were traveling from Western North Carolina to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So, you know, you're talking about a 10, 11, 12-hour drive with two small kids. They said, oh, well, you know, when you come back in a month, we'll, we'll, we'll bring you to your house. And I'm thinking, great. So we go back a month later after the evangelism class, and and we go to the pastor and the, ask the pastor about the couple, and the pastor said, no, they left. Uh, when I inquired why, they wanted, they, they came to the pastor and actually wanted to bring the dog in 
and had the dog prophesy behind the pulpit. Oh my and the goodness! Pastor, the pastor said absolutely not, and they got upset about it, I guess, and left. But I mean, how ridiculous to put your faith in a dog! Well, it almost sounds like a comic story. It doesn't even sound like it's real. But they they were really a real couple that really real, believed it's as that. Real as I'm sitting here talking. To you. I mean, they. I mean, and you know, it was just crazy, man. Just crazy. Uh, they would consult the dog about everything. Does this mean that Jesus' return is coming closer? Does this mean that this person is a Christian or a non-Christian? You know, and just craziness. Really, really crazy. Yeah. Well, see, and, and that's, you know, when, when you open yourself up to stuff like that, who knows the... I mean, you have endless possibilities of deception that you, that you can be involved in there. Yes. All right, so um, this is back to, back to the interview here. Uh, this is the uh, interviewing a- interviewee asking um, her the next question, or interviewer, I should say. Share a memorable experience when you began listening to God with pen in hand. This is what she says. She said, I began listening with, uh, I began my listening writing adventure while living in Melbourne, Australia. Soon after beginning this practice, I had a routine medical checkup that led to scheduling a hysterectomy. During that uncertain time of awaiting surgery, I was comforted. Now, this is, again, this is, this is a, a silent slam on the Bible. During that uncertain time of awaiting surgery, I was comforted by messages gleaned from listening to God. I wondered whether I would be able to receive messages in the hospital, but I packed my journal and took it with me. To my delight, I was able to listen to Jesus in the hospital as readily as in my home. Because of post-op complications, I was in and out of the hospital in three weeks, but God's precious messages continued flowing into my journal. This helped me stay close to Jesus throughout that tumultuous time. Now, here's the thing about this, Stephen. doesn't say she packed up her Bible. It says she packed up her journal. And on top of all that, um, it's not as if she was relying on Scripture to comfort her during her traumatic time. She was actually relying on the inward messages that Jesus was supposed to be giving her. Yeah. So, and And that's sad to me. About in each of these questions and responses is that where's the Bible at? Yeah. Uh, Now I'm assuming. I don't know, but I, I have to assume that if she's quote unquote communing with God, she's got to be reading something. Mm-hmm. How much scripture she's reading, I don't know. Or is she just going by her memory because she talks about whatever scripture verse comes to mind? So if you're if if she if she truly is practicing this listening to God without the Bible, then she really is doing something very very dangerous. And especially encouraging other people to do what she's doing. Folks, that is dangerous. If you're going to listen to God, you better have your Bible open. And you better be looking very, very carefully at whether what you're hearing comes straight from God's Word or whether it's just your own personal subjective feelings. Exactly. I was was going to say, if you are hearing a, a, a message from God, you better be real, real, real sure that it is from God before you act. Um, but the, the, the best way and the most surefire way to hear God's voice is to open up the scriptures and read them. Uh, last question. Nope. I'm sorry. Next to the last question, I think is, is there more? Let me just flip over. Yeah. Next to the last question in the interview. Uh, what are some of the most important truths you've learned from journal journaling? She says, I'll list a few. Number one, thankfulness, excuse me, is a source of deep joy uh, and rich blessing. It changes my perspective and helps me to draw closer to God. Number two... So you couldn't get that from reading the Psalms? Right. Exactly. I was thinking, uh, you know, you and I have almost the same exact mind. I wonder if it's something... I wonder if we're spiritually connected. Yeah. Um, Number two, through my natural... Though my natural tendency is to analyze and try to figure things out, Trusting Jesus is far is a far better way to live. I've realized how very limited my understanding is. 
Okay, so that comes from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. And lean now on lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Okay, so that's X nay number two that we don't need Sarah Young's book for. Hey, there you go. Number three, when I turn to God in my weakness, I receive his help and compassion in abundant measure. Well, okay, Philippians. There you go. My grace is, I'm sorry, Acts, or whatever. What, what was it Paul talking about the thorn in the flesh? My grace is sufficient for your weakness. Yep, there you go. So there's another reason you don't need Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling. Number four, peace is inerrant. This is what she's learning now from, let's remind, right, right. remind her, this, these are the things she's learning from listening to Jesus, not from reading her Bible, but from listening to Jesus. Number four, peace is inerrant in Jesus' presence. Okay, John 14, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but as I give. There you go. Another reason not to get Sarah Young's book. So the nearer I live to him, the more I enjoy his presence. Number five, God sees his children clothed. Oh, this is an e a hard one, Stephen, isn't it? God sees his yeah, children clothed in the perfect righteousness of Jesus. Hmm, let me think. Um, oh, gosh. Um, how many scriptures? Um, like all of Romans? Yeah. <laughs> just just um, Romans. Let me see. All the Galatians. There you go. So number a uh, number uh, the f a fifth reason not to get the book Jesus Calling number six uh, number six nothing can separate us from Jesus's love let's see Romans eight twenty eight that there you go through thirty three yeah see not it's a sixth reason not to get Jesus Calling. Number seven, there is indeed fullness of joy in his presence. And she okay, even so puts the scripture right there. <laughs> All right. I, and Steve, we kind of laugh at this, but you can pick this stuff apart. I mean, this is so easy to pick apart. Well, um, the thing is, is that people are falling for hook, line, and sinker. Oh, yeah. This will help me draw closer to Jesus. Everything she said is so, are general principles that are already found in Scripture. Yeah. Every single one. All seven of them. Yeah. And I noticed that she did seven, which is supposed to be the you know, number of perfection. I don't know if she did that on purpose or not, but I just happened to notice that. Well, maybe it's a sign. Maybe it is. Maybe it's a sign that we it's need to get the book. The book that, because perfection is already found in Scripture. So. All right. Last question. Have your studies, how have your studies in philosophy and counseling helped you in your walk with God? So that's kind of, um, I don't know if that's... Uh, going to be relevant to this, but let me, I'll read the, in reading the paragraph anyway. It says, when I majored in philosophy at Wellesley, uh, I was a non-Christian searching for truth. Each time I began studying a new philosophy, I'd get excited thinking this one might uh, end my quest. However, further study always revealed flaws. Eventually, I became disillusioned and concluded that there was no absolute truth. A few, a few years later, though, when I read Francis Schaeffer's Escape from Reason, my background in philosophy helped me to understand his reasoning I found in that book answers to questions I had previously uh, considered unanswerable. This opened the way for me to study at uh, El Abri, a Christian community uh, begun by that uh, or by the Schaefers. While living and studying there, I became a Christian. She says. Um, so anyway, she we we were going to also talk about God calling Stephen, but we're kind of um, yeah we're kind of running through uh, running running out of time here. Um, and uh, let me let me see how long have we been at this? We have actually been at this podcast now for over an hour, an hour and eight minutes. That's pretty good. Do you know how long it's going to take to upload this thing? Hey, that's that's on your end, buddy. <laughs> but uh, and and you know what, Steve? We did this in one take. Yes, we sure did. We have a rule here at Long for Truth: six takes. That, if we, well, that's Danny's rule. Six if we takes. don't get this in six takes, it we just quit. <laughs> I just kind of roll with it. You hear all my flaws. You hear all my stutterings. I just kind of roll with it. You hear mine too. I'm not a perfectionist. You ought to hear that. You ought to hear that. Go back and listen. Listen to the uh, first episode of uh, the uh, uh, Misunderstandings of the Trinity, which, by the way, I will be putting part two up in a, in, a, in a week or so. I did get that recorded last night. So that will be up. We do pre record these uh, podcasts. Uh, this is actually going to be put up as soon as we are done because of, uh, I think, the importance of this topic. Steve, any final thoughts uh, before we... My final thoughts would be exactly what uh, Justin Peters said. If you want to hear God speak, read the Bible. 
If you want to hear God speak audibly, read it out loud. That is great, great, great wisdom. That's from Justin Peters. That's not me. Not um, Justin Bieber, Justin Peters. Not, not, yeah, not Justin Bieber. No. <laughs> All right, we're ending it here. Listen, you can find us at uh, longfortruth.blogspot.com. You can email us at gmail at longfortruth at gmail.com. You can also find us on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash longfortruth. And, and Danny, before we go, I want to let people know about a, a great resource out there. It's called The Word. It is a free Bible software program. You can download it from absolutely free. They have hundreds of modules for studying the Bible. Just go to theword.net and download the program for free. Download any add-on modules. It is a great, great free Bible program. The best, in my opinion, bar none. Uh, all right, all right, good, good job, Steve. I'm playing the, I'm playing the outro twice now. That's because <laughs> I, I was playing the outro, and then let me tell you about. And actually, folks, that is a great resource, and you can look on our YouTube, uh, YouTube page, and see uh, some tutorial videos that Steve made there. Uh, just uh, go on. They're actually on the blog too. Okay, they're on the blog. Longfortruth.blogspot.com. See you next time.